Welcome to another episode of the Law Offices of Quibble, Squabble, and Bicker on this 16th of February, 2022. Hopefully everybody had an exciting and raucous Valentine's Day where you were throwing roses at everybody walking near you and gave them um, lots and lots of trouble. Hopefully that happened. Um, today our client is Teddy Bear's Freedom Convoy. Behold, trapped in a hellscape of their own invention, socially unaware old white men bound by the pretense of being fake lawyers yet knowing no law, no exquisite Latin terminology, they are inexplicably compelled to quibble over minutia, squabble over triflings and bicker like those who value their backyards far too highly without even knowing the difference between an easement and an alleyway. At this very moment, you have entered the heart of the law offices of quibble, squabble, and bicker. Let's get started. Today, the law offices of Quibble, Squabble, and Bicker are not sponsored by the Happy Hour News Team, straight out of North Dakota, a podcast hosted by a cranky welder slash first responder and a really old babysitter slash last responder. They are an unconventional news team that has a few too many drinks and brings you the news you didn't know you wanted to hear. Sanchez El Dorado and Shanty Pants spared no expense finding you obscure stories about Florida Man, unusual animal facts, and WTF stories while getting more and more intoxicated. All of their opinions are ambiguous at best and are intended as satire. Their humor is intended to be enjoyed by adults and the mentally challenged. So, kick off your shoes, pour a drink, because you'll need at least three to listen to the news you didn't know you needed. If you have a hot tip about a Florida man, want to wish Sanchez a belated happy birthday, or really enjoy making crank calls in the middle of the night, give them a ringy dingy at 701-369-0029. That's 701-369-0029. Brought to you by Fly on the Wall Productions. All right. Well, there is our sponsor for today. That, was, that wasn't a fake sponsor. They just didn't pay us. That was the first <laughs> they, time. They have no idea that they did not sponsor us. But, they, but this is the first time we've actually uh, had a commercial for something that's real. Well, you know, I I didn't have a lot of time to deal with things today, and you didn't want to do this fake sponsors, so I had to do something fast. No, I liked so. it. It was just as funny as anyone we've ever done. You made okay. it funny. Okay. Well, that's good. I'm just saying that, you know, you didn't want to do it. I like the idea of Sanchez being a last responder. <laughs> as well as a really old babysitter. I thought they'd, they'd appreciate it. I don't know if they're still listening to us or not. I don't know if they still listen to the show. Cause if I you know have an that, emergency, uh, Sanchez will show up the next Sh day. Shanty has... Um, like rules at work now he can't like have headphones in or something so he can't like listen to his podcast all day oh, long like he used to yeah, exactly so Fuck. i don't know if he's actually listening to the show anymore but um but anyway so um it's just me and greg uh brendan is kind of on a sabbatical for the i don't know how long so uh one day brendan will be back everybody i'm sorry if you're you're missing him i know he's really good at reining greg and i in to a certain extent and he's often funnier than we are so uh you know that's why you're hearing me do sponsors more often because brendan's he's the around. fonzie exactly but today's client after a much heated debate about what the client could be today's client once again if i can say it is teddy bear's freedom convoy and that kind of puts together a few different points of popular culture. Now, back in the 70s, truckers were very popular in popular culture. There was the Smokey and the Bandit movies, and there was the the country song Teddy Bear about some trucker going to help some little kid who's dying. And then there was the... Uh, C.B. Savage. Don't forget C.B. Savage. I don't know who C.B. Savage is. It's a famous is. trucker song, like novelty song, but incredibly homophobic. <laughs> okay. I looked it up. And then there was the song Convoy, which is, you know, all them truckers breaking the law and what have you, because they're... But BJ and the Bear, too, which is... Oh, yeah, I was, I was going to bring BJ and the Bear up. The um, trend was still going. And they, they, had, they had a monkey, and, you know, it makes you wonder, whatever happened to Greg Evigan? Did he have a career after that TV show? And why the hell do I still remember his name? That's the other question. I think the monkey ripped his face off in the last episode. <laughs> the monkey ripped so, off his face? And that's Evigan. why we never heard of him again? Well, he's very popular in radio drama now. Do you think the monkey's actual name was Bear, or did it have a different name? I don't know. I think his name was uh, Warren Worthington III or something. Oh, was that it? Okay, he was also he was on Gilligan's monkey. Island. The very fancy monkey. 
He was also on Gilligan's Island playing Thurston Howell the Third. Yeah, he was a very he was rich. He was richer than you or me. He was, was, a, a, he was on a network TV show. Imagine yeah, I mean, that. you got to wonder though, like the pitch meeting, who came up with the idea of a guy driving a truck and he had a monkey? Was that like the time of uh, the Clint Eastwood movies, Every Which Way But yeah. Loose, where he had like an orangutan? Yeah, yeah. But he wasn't a truck. I don't even remember what kind of jet. He had a pickup. He truck. was a trucker. Wasn't he a truck? I don't know. He had a pickup truck, but I don't think he had an actual semi that he drove around. I thought that that was the point. I thought that's why BJ and the Bear did that because they were like, "We're gonna just gonna rip off this movie." I don't movies. know. I don't know. But yeah. But either way, I'm like, there's another interesting one, which is yeah. a movie of a guy roaming around with an orangutan. When I was a little boy, they actually had these trading cards, or I think they were stickers, but they were like trading cards of like CB stuff, and they'd have weird cartoons of like i know i had all the lingo on the back so you could learn like breaker breaker all right 10 4 good buddy like, we were fascinated by that shit kids were actually like they were like ninjas in the 80s truckers were like our heroes well no this is like the 70s that's what i mean but you said the you know, 80s yeah in the 80s ninjas became every kid wanted to be a ninja in the, the 80s the 80s the, at least the early 80s it was uh cowboys because of uh yeah well at least where i was living because of the the travolta movie urban cowboy suddenly everybody was really? wearing cowboy hats i know. remember as adults like would have the in bars they'd have the riding bulls more right right but kids we didn't give a shit about that movie I, my friends were just like that's it could be film. just that my parents were really into country music and that's how i wound up yeah. having a cowboy hat on my head in eighth or ninth grade i can't remember which year it was i was wearing a cowboy hat um and the weird thing was i was living in washington but you know when cbs came out my dad totally got into that and he bought a cb and he had his own handle which is the term everybody and by the way we should clear up what cb is for all of you young folks out there cb stands for a citizens band radio and it's essentially what truckers used to use to communicate with each other it was like a, like a walkie talkie for truckers um and uh somehow they were able to uh, communicate whereas most people weren't doing that in their own vehicles you think they would do that you know um, we until in our van until it became uh the the bourgeois thing to do which is to buy a cb yeah. so what did your dad have his own handle as well his own nickname i don't think he really used it like sometimes i think it came like almost like in the package when you bought a car it was just like you might need a cb if you're there's an emergency. It's the you package. Remember, it's cell phones. They should still do that then. They should still give people the option for a CB well, in their new cars. People have cell phones now, so it's kind of moved. So it's like, but. Well, yeah, but the thing about CBs that's different is that you could talk to people whose numbers you don't have. It's not moot, actually, because basically you're driving down the road and you there's a truck moving ahead of you, and he knows whether or not there's cops out there. So you can just talk about the guy's truck. And say, hey, so and so, do you see any cops on the way? And he'll be able to talk back to you because. Could CBs do that though? Is could CBs like, like I could talk see to your people? Tr- yes, they could talk. No, to no, people. I know they could talk to people, but I could see your truck ahead of me and like point that truck out on my CB and be like, I want to talk to that guy. Right no, you there. don't point it out. You say it over the the microphone. Yeah. So you, he might be so listening or might not. More than likely, they were listening because they were always listening. But you don't. It depended upon what channels. You know, they would say breaker one nine, breaker two three. Those are the numbers of the channels. Okay. So you would announce yourself on a channel to find out what trucks are on that stretch of road the you happen to be in on. In front of me, say a trucker is in front of me. I want to talk to him, but yeah. he's on a breaker two three channel. Yeah. I don't know that, so I'm just like. I could figure out a way to talk to that trucker a hundred yards away from me. Yeah, there's that, that potential. Work. Yeah, <laughs> you. I mean, it sounds like your dad never actually took his CB out of the package and used he it. Barely used it, and, and I, <laughs> we used a CB. Me and my friends had a CB in the basement. Like, like we'd all have like fun party nights, and we'd get on the CB. And this is weird. Um, what do they call it on the internet when you uh, catfish? My friends, because you were you were catfishing truckers. Yeah, we were like twelve year old kids, <laughs> so we sounded, you know, we had high pitched voices, and we would get on the thing and and see what the nasty things that say. We'd be like, "Hi, I'm a lonely woman. How you doing? <laughs> Smoke, uh, whatever. Give them some trucker name." <laughs> and so, wait, so, so, so you and your friends would pretend to be girls. Yeah. And you would. How old were you at the time? 
Like this is like ten to twelve. So even ten nine. to twelve years old, you're calling truckers on your CB at the age of ten or twelve. Because <laughs> we couldn't hear naughty to words. To try and entrap them in like a pedophile. We pedophile weren't gonna scheme. do anything about it, but we just laughed. We just were like, "Oh my god, he's cursing and saying all this gross stuff." Because you could, we didn't. We grew up in the age where we couldn't see porn. We couldn't see yeah. any naughty words on TV. Right. Couldn't get no rated R movies. So it was just like, whoa, what is he gonna what is this guy gonna say? And they'd say nasty shit. Like, oh, I'm gonna come over there soon and whatever, I'll give you a lube job, you know, whatever. <laughs> like gross sexy stuff, sexual stuff. Okay, well well then we never put it to use as such as that. Um <laughs> We, my dad, because it was in my dad's car, and so we would drive, we'd do like road trips, and he would pull out the CB, and his handle was the Tennessee Talker, was his handle, because my dad was from Tennessee, and apparently he liked to talk. He didn't really talk to me and my brother much, but uh, he did have a gift of pontification, which is where I think I get mine from. So he wouldn't just talk to the truckers for advice, like where's the smoke is, he'd just have long conversations about Sartre. No, no, he wouldn't. He would definitely not have cut. <laughs> he was talking about where did porcelain come from? That's what he was. He most wanted to find out. It's like, can we turn lead into gold? He was calling truckers up to see their opinions and how successful they've been at uh, alchemy is what the conversations would be <laughs> on the CB. That shit. They know. <laughs> they are. If anybody can figure it out, it's a trucker. So, but just so people know, and uh, I want to welcome anybody who's on TikTok who's just seeing my side of the conversation. We're um, a law offices of Quibble, Squabble, and Vicker. We're uh, live on YouTube right now. It's just me and uh, Greg, who's the, one of the other members of the law offices. We don't have a, a guest today. Um, and our client is Teddy Bear's Freedom Convoy. So, um, you know, this is this particular client came out of the fact that there's this major issue going on in Canada right now where there's truckers I, I and I don't know the details so well everybody but I might I might I think it's that there's truckers who are blocking the border from the United States to Canada because they're against the COVID restrictions the Prime Minister Prime Minister Trudeau has put down um, regarding truckers who cross the border having to be in quarantine when they come back to Canada and they don't like that and so it's kind of like the um, the conservative Canadians who are involved the the pro the anti-Trudeau, they're not like pro-Trumpers in Canada, but they're anti-Trudeauers in Canada. So you have to kind of look at it from that perspective. And uh, this caused the Prime Minister of Canada to invoke something called the Emergencies Act, which is and he's the only Prime Minister who's ever done that to basically make the, make the truckers stop. You'd think he could have just gotten on the CB and pretended to be a little boy like you, Greg, and say that he's dying and get all the truckers. Like teddy go. bear? <laughs> exactly. My dying wish is that you stop this convoy. I'm Justin Bear. Justin Bear Trudeau. No, I'm curious, though. Did Pierre Trudeau also ask that the monkeys stop their behavior? All the truckers' monkeys? Well, just Pierre, truck. Trudeau, Pierre Trudeau I'm is sorry, not the Pierre. Prime Minister of Canada. I'm sorry, Hank Trudeau. Whatever his name is. <laughs> Harvey. Justin. Harvey I just said his name. It's Justin. Yeah, I know. So you know, and you know, and you know, it's time for like Gen Xers and Millennials to to be in power when someone named Justin is now running things. You know, it's not really a an what older about if his name. name. Was Hunter Hunter Trudeau? <laughs> then he would definitely be a millennial. But I mean, I'm just curious if Justin Trudeau also like appealed to the monkeys that every trucker apparently has. So <laughs> can you do something about this? Tell your tell when you get your semi, to... you get a CB and you get a monkey. <laughs> standard, come standard. <laughs> do you have? Do you get your choice of monkeys whenever you buy your truck. So, so what kind of simian would you like with that? Uh, orangutan, <laughs> chimp. Take out, take out my monkey menu. Everyone needs a monkey menu so they can make choices about like what kind of monkey they should have as their sidekick. You know, it's like we were talking about in the last ep where the MCU episode about sidekicks and, you know, why why don't more people have sidekicks, really? Truckers should have sidekicks, and I think monkeys work well with that. They're lonely, um, yeah. If you could have a sidekick, Greg, what would your sidekick be? If I was a trucker or just in... Yeah, just, in, just you right now. As a what, dishwasher. As a dishwasher. <laughs> yeah, you know, you'd, you'd be like the only dishwasher with a sidekick. A guy who goes around, he helps you with your your scraps with the law, you know, or whenever you're trying to fight crime as a dishwasher, what? lowly dishwasher by day, crime fighting dishwasher by night. Well, I mean, there's non-superheroic sidekicks, you know, just like yeah. a sidekick is just like, um, 
Potsy to to Richie. Yeah. So if I just had a normal sidekick, I imagine my lifestyle, I'd have an imaginary rabbit named Harvey. No, that's cheating. That's using a movie. I know, but I'm a drunk, so that makes sense. <laughs> so, have, so you're allowed to cheat on the sidekick game that we're playing? Cheating? It's a it's a sidekick. It's, it's stealing somebody else's idea, Greg. We want full full, full. creativity from you. Okay, then I'd I'd pick a um, uh, a talking kitten. <laughs> We just sit in my a talking it. a talking kitten would be your yeah. sidekick. That's the kitten. It would have to it have to be able to talk too. I'd hide him in my hoodie all the time. He could give me advice and be like, <laughs> "That's called a pet, Greg." <laughs> I know, but if he was talking, it'd be more of a sidekick. Yeah, be. I suppose. And would the kitten give you lots of advice? <laughs> he could. What, what, kind That's of what, a, what kind of advice would your talking kitten give you? Yeah, actually, what is the purpose of a sidekick? I don't really quite know that. Um, well, I think it's just a companion. You know, you're like, it's usually the beta or this is zeta male. You know, it's like, so there's the hero and then he has yeah. a sidekick. He's okay. not as cool as he is. But still, the hero gets lonely. So the hero, heroic trucker on these long hauls, yeah. he might want some weird little dude to be like, <laughs> talk to him and talk his ear off during those his long monkey. Yeah, like well, a guy named Sparky. That wasn't that. Uh, wasn't Sparky on Speed Racer? Wasn't know. that the name of the monkey on Speed Racer? Was that remember. Sparky? Could be, sure. Or was that the kid's name? What was his name? Beppo. I can't remember. <laughs> what wasn't Beppo like Superman's monkey or something? Yeah, we talked about that two weeks ago. I was doing a callback. Because <laughs> I was oh, that... Chim Chim was the name of the monkey on Speed yeah, Racer. Yeah, that sounds That's... right. Chim Chim. Yes, exactly. Well, so what kind of sidekick would you want? Ah, uh, you know, or what sidekick like would be the best to have with me? I think I would want a retired pope. <laughs> you mean a dead one? This is no, not a, they no, just there's, died. there's like one retired pope. I want that guy. <laughs> was there a pope ever just stepped down before? He yeah, died? it was Pope Benedict. He stepped down like about five, ten years ago, something like that. Oh, I thought he died. So he no, just... no, he was the German one. Yeah, he stepped down because they wanted him to. I think it was more of a, like, get the fuck out of here. We'll let you step <laughs> down and keep your dignity. I don't know. I don't know. Nobody who... liked that guy because everyone thought he was a Nazi. Did they really? Well, I think just because he was German. Well, I mean, the thing was, is, yeah, but I think he was too young to have been a Nazi. I know. Well, he could have I mean, been a Nazi. He could have been maybe. Well, Nazis maybe, today. Well, that's true. You know, I don't know. I don't. I thought he went out with dignity from what I understand. It seemed like nobody was that thrilled with Pope Benedict. Like it seemed like Pope John Paul II. Everyone. Well, you know better because you're raised Catholic. I didn't pay that much attention. Pope John the Paul II. I'm sorry, Pope John the Paul. (laughs) Pope John the Paul the the second. I I think I told you. Pope John the Paul the second. When I went to Italy, unfortunately, I the first time I go to Italy, first time I go to Europe. And I'm 40, in my 40s. I'm like, wow, I get to go to Europe. This is great. Wait, and I the- got this great comment from TikTok, Greg. Uh, it says that I need to start flossing. Wow. So- <laughs> That's constructive criticism. I like it. <laughs> Apparently, I, I guess I should start now. <laughs> and he's going to be like, Greg needs to stop drinking so much and lose some weight. No, I think it was a woman who said it. So um, she's being kind, apparently. So she's trying to give me some useful advice. I think advice. it's Levina. It's I'm like, wife. at my age, you know, if I'm not flossing now, good luck getting me to do it. So, I think it's your wife. I actually keep that. all the food particles in my teeth for shows such as this to uh, make sure everybody can participate in my bad hygiene. That could be a new segment on our show, Flossing with Matt. <laughs> That's flossing. That could be good. Yeah, <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> but I was just saying, when I went to Italy, I had the bad misfortune that the Pope fucking died right when I was hitting, hitting Rome. The whole city was shut down. I was like, Rome or Vatican? Well, Rome and the whole city of Rome was shut down, and then the Vatican area was shut down. I mean, it was a big thing. Like they loved him. Yeah. Uh, apparently, a third of the population of Poland was in Rome that week. Wow, the third of if the you population. In Poland, That's pretty if you were in Poland at that time, if you lived in yeah. Poland, one out of every three people you knew would just be gone. <laughs> it, be it was like, like the, it's like the rapture hit Poland. Exactly. 
<laughs> it's like were, suddenly the, everyone's gone. The streets were choked with like ten cities, and they had giant screens up of the. So nobody had a good seat because everybody was behind a pole. But they seem to be having like a. Oh, uh, you know, time. was the joke lost on you? That's sad. Yeah. You ignored. I, I gotta your... say, it's the sound of this new computer. I could barely hear it. So the, you ignored the joke. <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's break that joke down then. So, because you don't go to a sporting events, a lot of times the worst seat you can have, or say a concert for that matter, is sitting behind a pole. Like you know, you're stuck and you can't see behind it. So, while you were in Italy during the time that the Pope had passed, John Paul II, and all the Polish people were in Italy, they are called poles, people from Poland. And so, if you're behind anybody. And there were so many of them, everybody had a bad seat because everybody I wish was I heard that joke stuck the first behind time. a pole. <laughs> so you didn't have to hear me break it down. Are you going to start telling pole lock jokes now? No, I know. I don't use that word. I'm not doing racist jokes, Greg. <laughs> they so. were lighthearted races in those Polish jokes, though. Yeah, you know, if, if you weren't Polish, it's easy to say that. <laughs> I'm not Polish, but, you know, the fact is, is that... People take advantage of these things because they go, well, you know, the person's not there, so it's okay for me to say it. You know, it's just one step away dancers. from bullying. What? I wonder if there's a strip club where they have pole dancing, where it's just they, the dancers <laughs> go on a pole. A Polish guy. That's probably the name <laughs> of like every it. every strip club in Poland is called pole dancing. And you go inside, it's just some old guys doing this cute little folk dance. It's like, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> See that guy strip. Some old Polish man. What What is the national garb of Poland anyway? This is a bad joke. No, no, I'm wondering if you know. I was wondering if you could answer the I question. I picture them wearing kind of Lederhosenly type things. <laughs> something like that. Lederhosenly? Yeah, not thing? exactly like German Lederhosen, but something cutesy like that, like with Little fringes and it's it's Polish hosen. Polish hosen. Polish hosen. You know, I'm trying to find some information, but I'm not. But doing how many Polish job. people does it take to get into some Polish hosen? That's the question. Well, probably one because most people only need themselves to put on their clothes. So. You're the worst comedian ever. You can try. <laughs> it's a good thing I'm not a comedian. You know, I mean, what I did, I did stand up comedy briefly way back in the day, and I realized that uh, I, I don't do good at it. I'm yeah, not good at stand up comedy because I didn't like writing jokes, and um, I work better just, I mean, I'm not necessarily better, but I prefer extemporaneous communication. That's more entertaining for me. And the other issue is that. I didn't really care about entertaining the people in front of me. I cared more about entertaining myself. So if I wasn't entertaining myself, then it wasn't really worth it for me. You know, I've learned this about myself. Like my extreme narcissism requires. Well, that's how playing punk rock was for me. I never cared about the audience. I was yeah. like, I had a good time tonight. There was two people there. Nobody <laughs> liked it, but there was a great show because I had a lot of fun. See, that's what's important. You have the two people who were there who didn't like it, right? And then you, and that's all that and that's all that mattered. Yeah. Well, I had a good time, so I win. Yeah. They you, lost, unfortunately. You'll, you'll always be the winner. I feel but, sorry. Um, oh, I realized that we should probably, we should probably. Um, have we hit the halfway mark yet? No, I don't have a clock. <laughs> well, I think we started about halfway on the hour. It's a little after oh, five right now. I could check when the last time you called me, or I called you, because then I think we were on the phone for like what? Well, we're in, a, we're in a weird lull talking about the convoy, so I figured this might be a good time to bring Waspy into the yeah. mix. So uh, why don't we bring in um, our? We started at like four twenty, I think, because it says, "Or don't pray to the laughter." We'll bring in everybody's favorite horrible, work. horrible cook. Um, I don't know that it's everybody's favorite, but at the very least, it's our favorite. Horrible cook. So um, let us I say uh, that either, Matt. What? I wouldn't say that either. No, you wouldn't agree to that. I well, don't know. Let's just get it started. Who knows what is going to be on the uh, 
on the grill today. Food is for eating. Food is for eating. Food is for eating with Waspy Soda Pop. Hey there, everybody. This is Waspy Soda Pop, another edition of Food is for Eating. Today, we got a treat for you, black rice pudding. Let's get into it. Here are the ingredients. Six cups of whole milk divided. Let's make sure it's on political lines. That's the only way you can divide whole milk. So then you get a half cup of sugar, half teaspoon of salt, one half a cup of long grain white rice. You can use like a heaping half cup. That'd be work too. Get two teaspoons of vanilla extract. You want to take that right out of the country if you need. Get a helicopter and you can get your vanilla the right way then you want some ground cinnamon that's optional you know sprinkle a little bit later and then four cups of fresh pig's blood all right on to the instructions in a large saucepan you combine five and a half cups of the milk sugar three cups of the pig's blood and salt bring that to a boil over medium high heat you stir in the rice reduce heat to low be sure to adjust the heat so that it is at a gentle simmer it cannot be rude. It must be very polite. Stirring occasionally. Cook for 50 to 60 minutes. The mixture should thicken up to the consistency of yogurt. Whether that's Greek yogurt or yo play, I'm not certain, but something like that. Then once thickened, remove from the heat, stir in the vanilla, let it cool, then refrigerate. The last half cup of milk and the final cup of pig's blood is stirred in just before serving. Sprinkle with cinnamon if desired, and there you go. You got your black rice pudding. Mmm. Mmm. I'm Wasp with Soda Pop, and this is Food is Free. Well, alrighty. So what kind of rice pudding was that? It's black rice pudding. Made black with rice pudding. Pig's blood. So it'd be kind of a, well, it's got sugar in it, so it's like a savory, a savory thing. Savory but sweet. <laughs> savory yet sweet, yes. Um, but it then makes... you, add, you add a cup of pig's blood just before serving, though. Yeah, as gravy. It's like a... <laughs> that... You want to taste the pig's blood. You don't want it all boiled in. You, you want to get that... Uh, you want to get it, like, washing throughout your mouth and that nice taste of copper. Yeah, that <laughs> trichinosis uh, yumminess. <laughs> Oh yeah, trichinosis yumminess. That's usually those two things go together. I is believe. it uh, is it raw pig's blood? So it's not like that pig's blood. You just it's cold pig's blood. Uh, it's fresh pig's blood. It was part of the ingredients. So yeah, that does not sound healthy. I think we should have a redaction. Of this <laughs> this waspy redaction. So so if we can do like that as the um as the client next week is using the word redaction. <laughs> no, we should have. Since a... We've said it this week. We can bring it up next week. We should have one of those warnings, like, please do not cook this at home. Waspy cooks his yeah, own Yeah, because cause we hope people realize that the recipes that Waspy Soda Pop makes really should not be tried or consumed by anyone. You know, I, most of them do not have palatable things within them, or they're just gross and nasty. So, yeah, we, we do have to give a disclaimer. Yeah, I think dangerous. For, for the morons out there who eat Tide Pods, that they should not try... The wasp, you know what? That you know, this day and age, there's gonna be people. If we ever had any popularity for this podcast, we would have some jackass somewhere actually trying out the recipes to um to see if they could make them in the way for that sure. they're stated, and then that would both be flattering and horrifying at the same time. Um, I don't think you'd be flattered that there's 50 people in the hospital. You'd be like, wow, I have. I I'm make a we were work. able to poison an entire town in Indiana. People listen to what I say. They care. <laughs> that wasn't what I say. It's what Waspy Soda Pop said. Yeah, I know, but we put him on he, the air, so he's we're responsible. The chariz- he's the charismatic one of the we're group. Res- we're responsible for airing his views. <laughs> right. Speaking should- of airing views, um, you know what time it is now, Greg? It's time, time for, for it's time for Ask Greg. It's for my jingle. For, That's for your time. segment, exactly. So let's uh, let's get that show on the road, okay? Okay? Are you ready for it? Let's do it. As always. What? What the hell? Where's my button? Here's my button. He has an opinion, may not always be right. He's a real fake lawyer. He's old and he's white. Ask him a question, because he's a good egg for bogus advice. Ask Greg. Ask Greg. Ask Greg. Ask Greg. Ask Greg. <laughs> I like that you're singing along with it now. I love it. I have a fucking jingle. <laughs> you don't have a jingle. I don't. It's true. Well, yeah. I mean, it's all my jingle, Greg. All of it. 
in your head, I'm sure. All of them. All of them. Jingles. <laughs> Everywhere I go, going, there's like, theme music playing in my head. You're, you're like, Matt is a cool guy. Look at Matt go to the 7-Eleven. Go, Matt. <laughs> you know, the weird candy. thing, Greg, just now is that 7-Eleven was the example that I was going to be using. And the fact that you picked that up shows that we know each other far too well. Yes. Yes. So, yeah, when I go to the 7-Eleven, there's theme music playing. It's like from Gary Shandling's show. It's the Matt Bracci show. <laughs> this is the theme to Matt Bracci show. It's Matt Bracci's show. It's the theme to his show. <laughs> it's his show. It's, it's Matt's show. Welcome to my show, everyone. And Greg happens to be here, too. He is actually my sidekick, and he doesn't even look like a monkey. But we're doing Ask Greg, so that is the hey segment now. right now. So, Greg, here is something. In Maine, there's a law which says you cannot advertise on tombstones. I think that that should be, um, that should be revoked. What do you say from your perspective as a fake lawyer? I totally agree. Do you think That's advertising should be legal on tombstones? That's an impeachment on freedom of speech. It's, I mean, I, I don't even have to be a lawyer to tell you that. It's It's an impingement? An impingement. That's a it's legal an, term. It's you might impinging? not know. <laughs> it's, an it's like the encroaching slightly. <laughs> it's an impingement. It's an impingement. It's an encroachment of freedom of speech. Is it encroaching on your freedom of speech? Yes. Or is it an infringement? Is that what you're really going for? Infringement is a less legal term. I was sorry. I'm not talking to layman now. I'm talking. I thought you were lawyers. saying that it was a lusty legal term, and that made things change completely. It can be lusty. You can advertise anything you want. You can advertise sex toys. But on a tombstone. So what you're saying is that you would say advertise um, sex toys on tombstones. Of course. <laughs> Without a doubt. Anything oh. you want. Yeah. Freedom of speech is absolute. It's a slippery slope when they tell us that we can't put advertisements on tombstones. Pretty soon you won't be able to write dearly beloved on tombstones. Or we loved our father. Or the date they were born. It's a slippery slope. You couldn't say the date they were born on tombstones anymore might, if you they, can't advertise on tombstones? If you give them an inch, they'll take a mile. <laughs> what about like political slogans? Would those be okay on tombstones? Of course. It's okay. All right. Well, there you go. Well, all right. How about this? In Maryland, there seems to be a law whether you're not allowed to curse while you're driving. First of all, that's a lie. What would it take to get that passed? Oh, so it's not a law. It's on it the is. Book. Well, no, it's in Rockville, Maryland. Once you pass the line in Rockville, Maryland, profanity is illegal while driving on any street, which is weird because I've been in Rockville and I have cursed while driving in that town. What if you, nobody heard you, like you were, the windows were closed and you, somebody could lip read though and saw that like, that guy just said fuck when he was waiting at that stop sign. Would that be applicable? The I think you would have to have actual evidence as opposed to just witnessing somebody's lips move. What if a police officer knew could read lips? Well, then, yeah. Then a police, if a police officer witnesses it, you're screwed. It's kind of like if a police officer sees you driving without your seatbelt on. This screwed. seems very much like that uh, Tom Cruise movie, a Minority Report. That's it's just what's... Minority nobody's report. offended. Nobody can hear you curse if you're just in your car. So there, it's like they're looking into your brain. Yeah, but like, Minority Report was about murders. And yeah. uh, stopping people before they kill. What did I say about slippery slopes, Matt? They're slippery. <laughs> that you have difficulty with them because they're, they're buttered. They're slippery and they're slopey. <laughs> and you start sliding down those slippery slopes, you don't know where you're going to end up. So do you describe people with the word slopey also? <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> okay. I already made fun of the Pollocks. <laughs> uh, he did it again, just now. No, using that Polak's derogatory term for thing? Polish people. You can't say Pollocks? Anymore. No, no, it's it's. I think that's what you call a Polish person, a Polish. No, you call them that if you're like some kind of a stevedore, or a, a longshoreman, you'll call them that. You know, somebody who, uh, you know, I guess if you're you're of Polish persuasion, you could call yourself that, but somebody else calling you that, it can't be done. So, is the only word for it is a Polish person or a pole? A pole. Yes, a pole. So, is I tie okay? 
I saw an old gangster movie. They called all the towns the I ties. I think whenever you're taking people's nationality and making it into a derogatory term, then that's where it goes south. You know, that's I don't, what if becomes, it was just like I just I, I don't want to say the whole. If you're word. doing it specifically to single out a race of people or a nationality of people in a derogatory way, regardless of what, even if you're using the, the word itself, um, like, oh, that Italian, you know, oh, the, the way that. in which you're saying it is going to be I said, uh, derogatory. The, the Polacks had the first democracy in Europe. Would, would that be a shitty thing to say? Um, Just that word, because it, it's kind of like, I mean, it's not like, other very highly charged words to call people, but it's one that's not used, you know, okay. anymore, because it's been it was used derisively for so long. I had a neighbor. Nobody name. jokes are told about people from the nationality, and the fact is, is they're they're no different from anybody else. So. I kind of knew this, but because I had a neighbor named the Polacks, it was, I think it was pronounced Polacks. Yeah. And once my sister, who was a sweet kid, she just she was like, Mrs. Polak. She started yelling at my, you know, ten-year-old sister. Dad, how could you? When the Polacks, like she was very sensitive about. It. Well, there's that comedian, uh, Kevin Pollock, which his name yeah. I'm sure got mispronounced a lot, and he had yeah. to deal with. I don't know if he's of Polish descent or not. I don't know what nationality that is, but um, you know, it all depends. But yeah, I believe that Poland did have like the first democracy in Europe. They you could vote in your kings in yeah. Poland. And you could vote out the king as well, which I thought was interesting because king usually was something that was derived from um, being connected to God, you know, like your God's rule. I also think that another positive thing about the Poles is that they're very communal and uh, community minded because, like, when they had a screw in a light bulb, they'd have the whole, like 10 people there all to help out, just like building a barn with the Amish. Uh -huh. Yeah. You know, like... So you're saying the Polish people would go to help the Amish build barns? No, no, I'm saying like that. They had a very nice communal social thing where, like, you got to screw in the light bulb, whatever. <laughs> Joseph, I'll be over. Me and my net friends will help you out. Is Joseph a common name in Poland? I think so. Uh, it's not like Lech? With an F. Yeah, Lech. Lech. Lech will be over. Ten of us will be over in, in an hour to help you out. I wonder if that's where Ben Affleck got his last name from. You think so? I don't know. Affleck. <laughs> Lech. <laughs> It's the only I other like, lech I can think of. I couldn't think of anything else that went with it. I'm like, uh, my mind, it's not working. I cannot get another lech in my Polish head. The Polish person we know is Lech Walesa. Like, how many lechs does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Roll Pop? I don't know. <laughs> Probably so what's the one, question again? One guy. Um, <laughs> I don't know what question are you talking about. Should Polish people be rounded up and put in camps? Is that <laughs> no, it's not, that was not a question that should ever be asked, let alone answered. No, what was the question? We were talking about headstones. Oh, oh, that was cursing, cursing, cursing while driving. Car. Yeah, yeah. And somehow you Once put again, on your. You know, I'm a freedom of speech guy, and. Well, apparently, freedom. also illegal in Maryland is growing thistles anywhere in your yard, taking a lion to the cinema, and wearing a sleeveless shirt in a public park. Taking a lion to the cinema. So, <laughs> could you take a tiger? <laughs> That'd probably be fine. I would think it'd yeah. probably have to be like any wild animal or large cat. Yeah. That's what they should say. Any like illegal. But you would have to specify like large cat because maybe you could take your regular cat to. Uh... No, but a wild cat though. A, you don't want a puma in a theater. <laughs> you don't want a cougar. No. Well, you know, there's lots of cougars go to cinemas. They, that's how they find young guys. Not to the, they're the fun cougars. Yeah. They're not the dangerous kind. Dad joke central today. Dad joke central. <laughs> like when is it not? Oh, so the Happy Hour News team said they're going to write me a jingle. They're uh, paying attention on YouTube. I'm just going to write, hey, guys, for once. So I'm actually, like, corresponding with people who are paying attention to the show on YouTube. I wonder if they were here in time to hear them not sponsor the show. I think so. they sponsored us, though. You know, they didn't give us money. They're, yeah. They're good wishes and love. It's It keeps us going. <laughs> Does it? It's like PBS. Good wishes and love. They keep us going. They keep us on the air. Well, it says we just have one person watching on YouTube. So that's the one person. Is, um, it's either Shanty or uh, Sanchez. So one of or it's guys. a trucker monkey. <laughs> Tr trucker monkey. I think if you ever had children, that's actually what you should name your first child, Greg. Trucker monkey pedics. <laughs> trucker monkey. 
<laughs> you, do you want to hear a really good story? I love this. This is a true story. Or add uh, add Canadian to the front of this. Would be Canadian trucker monkey. Cheetah from the yes. Tarzan movies from the thirties and forties. Yeah. You no, know, chimps lived a long time. Okay. He, like lived all the way to like the eighties and nineties. And in his will, his trainer. Cheetah. Who is Cheetah again? Cheetah was the monkey. Cheetah. They call, they call, I know it's not a cheese. From a where? Cheetah. Oh, in the Tarzan movies. Oh, the Tarzan movies. Cheetah. Okay. So you know his trainer, like put in his will, or his owner slash trainer, uh, it was like all this money we made. I made a trust fund for him. I love this monkey. I might die. I want him to have this mansion and a handler, someone to take care of him, and he can just do whatever the fuck he wants. So apparently, Cheetah had a mansion in L.A. or at least a nice house, a bungalow, and he would spend his days making paintings. My friend actually owns an original Cheetah. Uh huh. It's a very abstract, as you can imagine. Very so the Hollywood. retired monkey from Tarzan movies retired as an artist, and also he also loved to spend his day smoking cigars and watching Animal Planet. He watched TV <laughs> all the time. He loved watching animals. His but brothers... strangely enough, his fascination was with Komodo dragons and their mating habits. In case Could you didn't know. He had a lot of quirks. He was a quirky monkey. He's, he was a quirky monkey. Quirky monkey. <laughs> quirky trucker monkey. But he, this is, a, I'm not making this up. He really, like, had this uh, trust fund. And so then people would come in and be like, okay, I'll buy him food. Wait, you're not making up the fact that the monkey was an artist? I'm not. My friend owns an original cheetah. Okay, I... Whether they own something that has that name on it. It cost about $200. And did the monkey a... sign it? It was his paw print, probably. <laughs> but he would, he had, as a, after years, though, the because, you know, he lived to be like 80 or something. Did the I mean, monkey do like impressionist or cubism or what kind no, of art? No, it was very abstract, as you can imagine, but they were kind of beautiful. <laughs> he had a, this monkey and they had fed a, the monkey paint and he pissed on a canvas is basically what he did. This monkey had a good color sense. <laughs> he? he was the Jackson Pollock of the Simeon world. He was, <laughs> it was pretty nice stuff. I don't but believe also, you. I, I believe that I he swear, couldn't even operate up. an Etch-a-Sketch properly. Look it up. I swear to God, it's true. <laughs> look and it up. Google it. I didn't say that. I just said that it's true. I'm not lying. I would never where, lie. Well, then the if show. I can't Google it, where do I look it up, Greg? On Google. The, the Metropolitan I Museum. I just didn't say Google of, it. It's, it's MoMA. It's the Metropolitan Museum of Monkey Art. <laughs> Yeah, that's what it stands for. It's in, it's in a zoo somewhere. Right. But he also, after a while, his trainer got him off cig cigars because he loved the, the the later trainer who took care of him was like, oh, this monkey's dying. He's coughing all the time. So he figured out a way to wean him off cigars. Well, that's good that he got the monkey off cigars. Yeah. Had to wean him off cigars. Why were they giving him cigars? I mean, it's not like he was going to stores because and they, buying his own cigars. Yeah, I know, but they would, he, that made him happy. So they were like, oh, that's that's in the will. Do, do whatever <laughs> Cheetah wants. They give him, like, heroin, too? <laughs> if he liked it, I bet they would have. Yeah, sure, you know. And notice he really had a great time when he was all strung out. It makes him happy. <laughs> it's the junkie monkey. <laughs> How did I, I don't even know I was going to get a Ryman today. Thank you. Thank you for that he's opportunity. He's got the monkey on the back. He had, a, he had a monkey on his back. A smaller monkey. <laughs> a tinier monkey. Yeah, it's like if a monkey has an addiction, what do they have on their back? A spider monkey? Is the spider monkey on their back? But what if a spider monkey has an addiction? What's a spider monkey have on their back? Pygmy marmoset. I think they have a pinata. <laughs> They got a pinata on their back. A pygmy marmoset is the smallest uh, uh, simian. You should they're never simian. call your mother that, Greg. And they're I don't know why big. you're doing it. They're this big. They're is like it, so wasn't that like a song from Michael Jackson? Pygmy marmoset. Yes, marmoset, marmoset. Isn't that the line? It could. I don't know. It sounds <laughs> good. Does it? Okay. Well, you know, I try. All right. Well, we've like uh, definitely diverged from our client for today once again, which is Teddy Bear's Freedom Convoy, and um, not fully delving into the whole issue of like why these truckers are causing such issues in Canada. I know Canada. why they are because they're fucking idiots who don't believe in science, <laughs> and they're like, oh, why can't we do what we want to do during a pandemic? 
And why can't we keep spreading a disease that's going to keep killing people? Oh, I don't understand. I don't think it's going to believe in science. There's plenty of people who believe in science who are Apparently. getting vaccinated. Not really. If, you, if like almost every health expert says, yeah, you got to like, sometimes you can't do whatever you want. You can't go hang out with 4,000 people in a stadium without masks. Yeah. It's probably going to start spreading things. What do you think about the ending of the mask mandate here in Oregon, Greg? Wait, I don't, I won't have to wear a mask anywhere. Supposedly in March, the mask mandate's coming down, depending upon how things go with Omicron. Well, selfishly, yes. I, have to, I actually work for a living. I'm wearing that mask. Is that what you do? You work for a living? Because I know I, most people don't do that for a living. No, I know a lot of people get to work from home and get to not wear a mask. Wearing yeah. that mask is fucking hell. I fucking hate it. And, uh, but yeah, I do it because I don't want to spread this. I don't want disease to spread. Yeah. So you're going to like wear a mask forever? No. If they say it's safe, I'll trust the authorities because that's um, that kind of tool. Well, you have to wear a hairnet too at work, don't you? No. You don't have I'm to wear a hairnet? Washer. Yeah, Nobody no, but you don't does. want to get your hairs on the dishes that you wash. Nobody does break. that anymore. Nobody wears a hairnet. No, not even a burger. No, I bill. think um, if you do have like super crazy long hair, but in my job, there's people with long hair. Yeah. They don't care. They don't mind if it gets on the plates. It's demeaning. We're making people with hair and it's demeaning. It's demeaning to keep things hygienic. Eh, how often it sounds to me like you don't believe in science, Greg. I do. Well, you should know the science is very clear that if I you wear something over your head, it keeps the hair off of things. Your head often, unless you're in chemotherapy. Usually your hair stays put. Sure, every now and then a hair might fall off. Usually, usually your hair stays put. Tell that to all the bald guys out there. The guys their hair didn't stay put. Their hair decided to jump ship. Like so mine. Live, I... Like, I'm not bald, but it's certainly getting there because this forehead didn't used to be this gigantic. Yeah, mine, mine too. Back in the I day. I have a very low brow. As a matter of like fact, a... if you look over my over the top of my head, not just looking at my head, but look at the heads of the guys on the screen, they all have giant foreheads and receding hairlines. Because we're old. That's what happens when you have three old white so guys. I had no idea that March was going to do that. There's, no one has to wear masks in any store. Uh, allegedly. you know, I don't know if it's definitely happening or not, but it's been said. Well, how do they even know what the numbers are going to be? I thought it was all about just... Well, because hey. the numbers have been dropping pretty significantly. But they rose like crazy a month ago. They did, but they rose with a uh, a, a less severe version of COVID. Yeah, that's true. So, you know, so, I mean, it's the rise in deaths you got to worry about, not the rise in cases. Yeah. So that's the biggest. It's not much of a risk days. to get a bad. It's clinic. the rise in hospitalizations and the rise in deaths. That's the most important thing. Yeah. So I mean, which a large part of that that's been put aside because of the vaccine. Even so though even a lot anybody's of un... listening who doesn't believe us think that's the case. The vaccine has been helpful for those of you who chose not to get vaccinated. We did our part, and fuck you. So anyway, but that's my statement for today on that. I do think, though, I imagine there's a if uh, people talk about Venn diagrams, I'm pretty sure that truckers. And people who don't like the vax ever like the vax, even when it was. I think that there's a big overlap there. Well, no, that's Call being me, uh, very staring. You're being you're being very generalized regarding yeah. truckers. There's plenty of but, truckers on both sides of the political spectrum. Yeah, both sides. No, I didn't say what politics they were. I just think for your truckers aren't that big in the science. <laughs> I knew a guy had a PhD, as, but he was a trucker. He just yeah. preferred driving a truck. Yeah, but he had a PhD in philosophy, probably, right? He's, he had a PhD regardless. It takes work to get one. Philosophies, philosophers don't know shit about science. They're PhDs dummies. are all philosophy, Greg. What do you think PhD stands for? I think you could have a PhD in, like, biochemistry. You can, but what's PhD stand for? It doesn't matter. It's, what do the initials stand for, Greg? It stands for potential. No. Kid. No. No. Head dream. Potential head damage. Head damage. <laughs> I think that's what you got. You have a PhD in potential head damage. Yes. It's philosophy of. Head it's damage. doctor of philosophy, but they make it PhD instead of exactly. DPH. Exactly. But right. I mean, that's doctor of philosophy. Term. That's my that point. That has nothing to do with what we're talking about. You're quibbling. This is such a quibble. If you're a philosophy PhD, that doesn't mean I think like, you're sh- just being specifically against people who've got PhDs in philosophy no, for I some reason. No, I don't trust them about science. Right, you don't trust them. That's the point. No, why should I? A philosopher that knows shit about 
chemistry. So why should anybody trust you about science, Greg? They shouldn't. Exactly. They'd be idiots. So yes, exactly. But I do know but that anything most you truckers say should not be paid attention to. Most truckers though don't didn't go to college even for any science. They never took a science course. You know, I'm unwilling college. to say that most truckers did not go to college. I don't okay. know where you get those statistics. So if you from. want to lie to our listeners, fine. Do you get where did you read those statistics? Where did you get that information from? It doesn't matter. It's just common knowledge. No, it's not common knowledge, Greg. It's common Greg knowledge. It's no, another it's one of your knowledge. generalities that you've st- Spewing out without having any specific evidence to back it up. Now, if you have evidence, I'll believe you. But common knowledge course. is that you know it's okay to uh, to breathe on other people and expect them not to get sick too. That's common. So you knowledge. never you, you never use that. common knowledge. I never attribute things to common knowledge Sometimes because that's because that's the lazy way of trying to make it's a point. Lazy. You can do the research after, but if you constantly <laughs> do the stop. research after. <laughs> <laughs> like for me to say, like, yeah, most homeless people have some uh-huh. kind of addiction. Yes. I don't have proof for that. But Yeah, I wouldn't say that either. But I'm right though. You know I'm right. <laughs> you're I don't know that you're right. Yeah, you know I'm that right. That most homeless people have some form of addiction? You don't know. I wouldn't yeah, say most that. Most people they're just out there for fun. They're like, oh, I, no, they're they have know. bad circumstances. That doesn't mean that they're addicted, that most of them are. I would I would be unwilling to say that unless I actually saw statistics which bore that out. That's irresponsible. You're an irresponsible well, journalist, Greg. You're an irresponsible dishwasher, Greg. Statistics actually do point it out. I just don't have them in front of me. Statistics. 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 Can you not hear me? I can hear you fine. I can hear you slur your words just fine. It wasn't slurring. I just put the cigarette in my mouth. You just put the cigarette in my mouth. How can you say statistics with a cigarette in my mouth? I get you messy, man. From the cigarette in your mouth. I just put 10 saltines in my mouth, and it was hard to (laughs) enunciate. I just put an entire sleeve of saltines in my (laughs) mouth. And for some reason, you can't hear me clearly. I don't know why. Anyway. Well, listen, we have come to an interesting part. This was an interesting client for today because it kind of started oddly and it went in all sorts of directions. This is what happens when Brendan isn't around. We lose, we lose total focus. We still talked about truckers, though. We, we, we did. Talked. It was there. I, mean, I think I'm starting to forget exactly what the show is about. I... It was about we talked about the Freedom Convoy, which is some thing that I didn't even hear about until today. I'm I surprised. You... That was like. Big, big news that you hadn't heard shit. about it. But you know to believe in science, you yeah. know that. Because science do. told you to. I science do. told you to believe in science. And yeah. not to believe in truckers. Because science is self-correcting. Because they're not educated people. Yeah, science is self-correcting. Truckers aren't educating at all because they don't have any education. You think truckers part. are not self-correcting? They're not self-correcting. They're not self-educated like I, I'm sure you're, not, just, you're self-educated. You're probably confused because you're thinking of road scholars, the truckers on the road all the time. Oh, it's good one. Thing, That's a good man. one, Greg. You get the dad joke of the day award. It's a different thing. <laughs> Most truckers are not road scholars. <laughs> right. They're highway scholars. Yeah. Which means they know where the good uh, whores are, lot lizards are, <laughs> and what truck stops, the prettiest lot lizards. Uh-huh. I think if you're calling them a lot lizards, they're probably not so pretty. Probably true, yeah. Yeah. There's, probably, there's a, there's a spectrum. Their I'm or sure there's some who are Komodo better. dragons because of the fact of cheetahs' involvement in looking at yeah, some are Komodo better than dragon others. porn. Lot lizards are the worst, you know, ugly, homeliest prostitutes. That's common of the knowledge. lizards. That's oh. proven. Is it common is knowledge? That, that's common knowledge. But also. I'm sure there's some that are prettier than others. Right. What about crack whores? Well, Where they they fall in that spectrum in your I'm sure particular... there's some crack whores who are like the they're like the Beyonce of crack whores. <laughs> you know, on that spectrum, they're pretty they look pretty good compared to the other ones. Ah. Not great. All right. Well, I think this is a good time to possibly like close things down when we're talking about crack whores before Greg's imagination goes into more wild and wondrous areas. You brought up crack whores. I brought up lot lizards. It's a big difference. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, we have to do this before your imagination goes into wild and wondrous areas, and then we'll we'll never get off the computer. Anyway, so 
I want to thank everybody for tuning in today, whoever tuned in. We knew we had one person from the Happy Hour News team that did not sponsor our show today, everybody. They were our fake sponsor for the day. Although they are a real podcast, so check them out. Happy Hour News Team, they're located uh, at uh, happyhournewsteam.com. I believe you have to spell out the word hour, but if you want to find them in podcast land, you can't spell the word hour. You have to just put an HR, so it's Happy HR News Team. Anyway, on behalf of Greg and myself and the missing, missing Brendan, this has been another episode of the Law Offices of Quibble, Squabble, and Bicker. Your consultation with the law offices of Quiddle, Squabble, and Picker has ended. You may pay your retainer at www.qsblaw.org. Please exit to the right of the water cooler and grab a candy from the front desk. We hope to see you again soon, but you need to leave now. I said leave. Why don't they ever listen? Get out! Get out! <laughs>